Implicit differentiation is what we're going to look at. And actually it is something we've already seen, just under different names. It's that idea we've called the chain rule, which we've called rates of change. It's all the same thing. So if I want to differentiate a function with respect to x, I could differentiate it with respect to y and then multiply it by dy dx. So y equals x squared. Now, I think I mentioned this before, but technically what we're actually doing here is differentiating both sides with respect to x. I mean, it's an equation. What you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. So technically, that's what we're doing. We're differentiating y with respect to x, and then on the right-hand side, we're differentiating x squared with respect to x. But on the left-hand side, we say, well, hang on, you can't differentiate y with respect to x, but you can differentiate it with respect to y. So we go, oh, well, I'm going to differentiate y with respect to y, but then I would have to multiply it by dy dx to balance the, the rates out. Differentiate y with respect to y, well, you get 1. And on the right-hand side, differentiate x squared with respect to x, you get 2x. So we're really getting 1 times dy dx equals 2x, dy dx equals 2x. Now, of course, we don't put all those middle lines down. We normally go y equals x squared, and we go straight to, well, dy dx equals 2x. But that's really what we're doing in all that. So if we appreciate that idea, it now allows us to do something like this. If instead of y equals x squared, we have x equals y squared. Now, ordinarily, you think, oh, let's make y the subject, and then we, we go. But you don't need to. If we think of it, no, I'm just going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I'll differentiate x with respect to x. And then on the right-hand side, I'll differentiate y squared with respect to x. Well, differentiating x with respect to x, well, that's easy. It's just 1. Differentiating y squared with respect to x, well, I can't do that. But I can differentiate it with respect to y. So when I see this thing, the y squared dx, what I'm really going to do is I'm going to differentiate y squared with respect to y and then multiply it by to y dx. So what do I end up with? Left hand side, differentiate x with respect to x, I get 1. Right hand side, differentiate y squared with respect to y, I get 2y, but I multiply by dy dx. Remember, it's the derivative we're trying to find, so if I rearrange that, there's my derivative. It's just that it's in terms of y instead of terms of x. But there's no reason why I have to substitute in the x value of the point. I could use the y value. And so that's what this one's doing. It says, well, no, differentiate the y value in and you'll get the slope at that particular point. If you wanted it in terms of x, you could do it. Then you could make y the subject and then substitute that in. I get a more interesting thing. I have to differentiate x squared y cubed. Well, in this one, I think, well, actually, I've got two things multiplied together. So I'll do a product rule. Write down the first, x squared. Diff the second. Well, the second is y cubed. I can't differentiate that with respect to x, but I can differentiate it with respect to y. 3y squared, but then I would have to multiply by dy dx to balance the rates out. But then plus, write down the second, y cubed, diff the first. Well, x squared, I can do, that's just 2x. So if I tidy that up, there is my uh, derivative of x squared y cubed. It would be 3x squared y squared times dy dx plus 2xy cubed. Now, that's probably getting more involved than anything we'd ever see, but it's still the, the same idea. But what it now allows us to do is this. If I want to find the equation of a tangent to a circle, I now don't have to rewrite the equation of a circle to make y the subject. I can leave it as x squared plus y squared equals 9. I will now just differentiate both sides with respect to x. Differentiate x squared with respect to x, not a problem, 2x. Differentiate y squared with respect to x. Oh, I can't do it with respect to x, but I can do it with respect to y. So I differentiate y squared, I get 2y, but to balance out the rates, I need to multiply it by dy dx. Equals the right-hand side, differentiate 9, well, that's just 0. Differentiate a constant, you get 0. I'll make dy dx the subject, and there's my derivative. So for this one, I have to substitute in both the x and the y value. Now, if you think about a circle, that kind of makes sense. If we've got a circle, and we just substituted in an x value, well, at any x value, there's two possible points. So how do you get the slope of the tangent? We don't know which one we're talking about. 
And if I was just to substitute in a y value, I get two points. Again, which one are we talking about? But when I substitute in both the x and the y value, I get one point. That's the one I want. So this becomes very useful. If I substitute in both the x and the y value, I get minus one on two root two. There's the slope. Point slope formula, and playing around with it, eventually, there it is in general form, x plus two root two y minus nine equals zero. So it's actually a little bit quicker than making y the subject and then playing around with that. So this is this idea of implicit differentiation. The exercise is from the old textbook, because there's not one in our textbook for this, but have a go at some of them and uh, try implicit differentiation.